is Fearcast. Fearcast.net. We're at the Oklahoma Steampunk Expo 2011. We're sitting here with Dr. Fear. I'm here, uh, more or less. Barely, it's Sunday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which anybody that goes to a convention knows Sunday is kind of zombie day. Yep. yep. We observe that. I usually raise zombies from the ground. I'm ground, not. I'm never one. But I am today. Yeah, it, was, it was a wild night last night. Yeah, there was some dancing going on. That I don't dance, and I usually play the music, and I'm an MC, so I like to watch gamers dance. It's kind of like watching I don't know, zoo animals. Because <laughs> you think, hmm, you know, I saw him today dressed as, a, as like a Star Trek Federation officer, and now he's boogieing. <laughs> it's like memories of Cinecon. Uh, which is coming up here, uh-huh. quick. And I'm ready for it. Cinecon, uh, June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Yeah. Uh, this year, Oklahoma City. Yeah. Uh, go to the website for details. I know we'll be there. You'll be there? Oh, definitely. I'm always there. But I'm going to guess as usual. Yep. And I'll have books and stuff for my show. And things I didn't bring this weekend. Tell me a little bit about the Dr. Fear show. Where did it originate from? Well, the TV show started in 2002 in the early fall, oh, I mean, early spring, late period of winter around February. Uh, because I was working on a TV station locally, and I was the board operator, which is somebody who runs the, the cameras and audio and all that, the graphics and stuff. And we did a Rocky Horror night for like our New Year's night uh, because we went here you know, for 2000, uh, 2001 to 2002 at that point. And we, we tried to have a, a call out to the people in Enid to, to, to show up in the costumes and do the Rocky Horror thing, because that's never been a tradition there. Mm-hmm. We had three people show up. One was in a costume, sort of. And it was the most apathetic, most dead event I've ever seen. We're playing the movie, and they're out there in the, on the studio floor, and nothing much happened. I mean, we would have been better off having like, puppies and kittens doing it. <laughs> you know. It's a good soundtrack to add to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exorcist. But anyway, uh, it was such a fail. It dawned on me sitting there. We were like three-fourths of the movie, and I thought, why don't we do a horror show? Because we have all the stuff. I mean, because we have the lights, the cameras, I know how to run all that stuff. And I play, uh, you know, usually old shows and films as like a uh, thing to pad out time sometimes. Because it was a, because the channel was an auction channel, mm-hmm. you know, like it looked like like there are everywhere, you know? and so when there's off times, I play stuff that was just films and whatever. So it just dawned on me. I grew up with, uh, of course, Count Gregor, which anybody from Oklahoma knows has to know who he is. And if you don't, yeah, go to the websites, uh, go to your, your website, our website. Oh yeah, we love Count Gregor. Oh yeah, yeah. I grew up on him in the late '70s and throughout most of the '80s, <clears throat> and it just dawned on me. I was thinking, well. Hmm. If he could do it, maybe I can. And I had no idea about him. I always wanted to meet him. And of course, I never did for a long time. <coughs> so then I proposed the idea to the guys at the station. And at first they were like, going, hmm. And they're thinking about it. Not to insult the people at the station, but they weren't visionaries. But they said, yeah, okay, we'll do it. They didn't see what was going to happen. But uh, I conceived the show. It was going to be like an 1800s esque kind of thing. I was being a mad scientist, we have a vampire and a ghoul. We've covered all the main themes in horror right there as it is, and then we can have extra characters come in and out that are based on uh, other horror aspects and kind of play with our movies. And uh, our first show was, uh, back then it was called Dr. Fear's Friday Fright Show. It was Friday nights at 12 o'clock, which was late. It was live too, right at the auction. <clears throat> and so I did a special six hour show that night. To kind of break in the town to the Texas show. I've been advertising for months, it's months and months. People knew that we were going to be, you know, there. And uh, and I, uh, you know, I advertised and I promoted it, and I would just assume people were going to watch because Enid people are apathetic. I mean, so apathetic that they couldn't care about caring. I mean, they just don't care. So the night went on, and we did our show, and I didn't hear anything about it. And like the next week came about, and then everybody at the station was telling me. We got like hundreds of calls about the show. I was like, uh oh, are they bad? Because it was, you know, because because like I had to run the equipment and be on camera at the same time because nobody else knew how to run the stuff. So I had to have this trick where I'd go on camera, do our thing, run off camera, let uh, my lab assistants do their thing while I'm operating stuff off, you know, uh, like you know, right by the camera. And so that became now uh, part of our normal 
kind of inner joke in the show because now we edit it and we pre-film it and this and that. So I'm always running in and out of the lab table as kind of a thing, and I'm off doing errands in the sanitarium and this and that. It goes back to those live days when we did that. <coughs> but uh, it kept growing and growing and growing. We did eight weeks worth of live shows, and it kept like snowballing. It just got huge, fast. And then I realized that Enid needed it bad because of, because our town is so deprived of horror and Halloween. Not well. And again, I guess on your show, I can, I can name names and say so. Huh? Thank you. What's the uh, name names? Uh... <laughs> no, I'm asking a tech guy. He's got his computer out. He's just yeah. drinking his Red Bull as usual. Well, it's not the, per se naming names, but I would say that because the church was in such a strangle hold from about nearly 200 churches, mm -hmm. the town was, that it had been starved of all of that kind of stuff, and it really needed it badly. But I didn't really really know how bad it, badly it needed it. And so by two months into it, we were getting huge in Enid. I mean, really huge. But the station itself was being ran by, well, co-kids and crazies, so it didn't last, it wasn't stable. And they co-owned a, uh, Football team, we had, you know those indoor teams that mm -hmm. play, and they were called the uh, called the crew. They were called the Oklahoma crew. And so, uh, in one one of the meetings, and I was there for no reason, also the fact that I ran some equipment for a farmer's show or something. And they said, "Well, we need to put our TV station somehow in the football games." And I was just joking around at the time, saying, "Oh, well, I could go out there and do curses to the rival team." And they all, I mean, it's like his bell had gone off. They looked at me and go, "Yeah, you know." Right. Yeah, you know, but it was really a cool <laughs> idea, and I filmed every time I did it. I anytime a rival team came to Enid, me and the cast would go out there in front of all the people before the game started, go to the rival team on the other side of the field. I had this pseudo cheap Latin curse I would write up that would play with them and jinx them and play on their name and psych them out. It was all for fun, and you know, it was all good. And uh, one, there was one team from out of, uh, let's see, like Louisiana that lost every time they came and, and played our team. And they associated with my curses. They were so superstitious that they had refused after, I think, the third or fourth time they got beat that they would never come back to do it again because I was there doing the jinxes. And then our team made little dolls of us and put them in their bus when they turned around to play because I guess they, you know, they, they would hope that it would help. I mean, that, fir that like, first year was kind of like magical in that sense. It was really, really, really neat. But the first night we did it, I thought there was like maybe 300 people in the seats or so. I, I mean, I couldn't tell. And I went out there and did it at the microphone, which sounds really cool when you have the mic and you're speaking in this huge, big, you know, expo center place. Your voice is just really powerful. It's like a, a you know, it's like a, it, 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 I mean, of course I can't talk right now, so I'm tired. <laughs> it's like the dream of a DJ to, to hear your voice be so powerful. And so I did my curse out there and I thought, oh, this is great. Two or three hundred people, no problem. And then uh, the the announcer, who's my old boss from radio back in the 80s, who owned the team, did a head count for all, all the ticket spot. And he said, oh, well, our audience of nearly 4,000 people here. And I was like, oh my gosh, I did that cheesy curse in front of 4,000 people. Whoa. On tape? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's filmed. It also got in the paper. And it had a little photo of uh, us out there, and I was doing my curse. And, and I, I, I need to upload, uh, all the video of those curses because I have them all in film. I made a point when we first did the show, I was going to like document every part of the show. Because you know, Kevin Gregor could back in the old days, and so a large chunk of his history is lost. Mm -hmm. I have a small collection of his stuff that's hard to find, and uh, some like shows in the 80s, some in the 70s, and he gave me some of them, and I uh, copied them over to like a on MPEG format and stuff. And uh, I've been meaning to upload them you know, at some point. I mean, I didn't want to do it just because he's still doing some projects and, you know, he might want to take those and, and put them out on like a DVD set or something else. Yeah. <clears throat> but he gave me all these things to you know, keep. But, you know, it, we, we went from the auction channel to the local public access in six months' time because, uh, like I said, the TV station was having issues. So by summer, we just kind of were we were all defunct from it, us and some other shows that were starting up. Because it, you know, KS, like the, the PI that's here in the area, well, we were KXOK, we were rivaling them for a long time. And there, there for a while, it looked like we were going to be what well, actually they are now. We were just so close and it failed. I mean, it failed. And everybody was bailing out and the station f fell apart. And 
just to show you how bad it was, the owner, who was a lawyer, who was a very nice guy, shot himself for the next year. You know, I, I can't wait to write this as a book, because I'm going to be writing this, this uh, probably like this next year, because it'll be our 10th year for the show. And I was going to write a 10-year history of the show. Carefully, though, because <laughs> there's so many people involved in this. Yeah, name. Yeah, most are still living, so I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> right, it's non-fiction, change all the names. Something, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. Because one of my favorite shows, you know, MST, uh, did a book like that, where they kind of wrote season for season about the episodes and shows, kind of a history. So I was going to do the same thing with our show, and have the cast write little, you know, commentaries about this episode and that year, and this and that, you know, Count Gregor and stuff in there, and that kind of deal. And uh, I was going to work on that for, like, this next year deal, <laughs> in theory. Where can people go to see your website and check out your shows? Uh, we have a website. It's www.themysterioulabofdrfear.com. Uh, we don't. We do have our videos on there, but they're pulled from our uh, page uh, on YouTube, which is youtube.com/alanek. It's, it, 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 it's a Celtic word. That's to say, A W E N E K. <clears throat> but you know, because I'm a Celtic scholar, so I use it everywhere. And actually, I made the account way before I had the show, so that's why I named it that. <coughs> I should have one that's just called like the lab or like fear or something, but I have 120 videos on YouTube right now, and all but three are the show. And uh, it's a mere fraction of what I'll have up there because because we're doing our 100th show in this next week. Excellent. Yeah. So you know, and when you have like four to six breaks per every 20 minutes of of like a two-hour span, and you upload each one of those, it it could be a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, like mathematically, it just quantifies. <coughs> so, it starts growing and growing. And yeah, it's just going fast. Yeah. But I know that uh, we talked earlier that we might collaborate a little oh, yeah. bit. I'm ready. It'll be fun. Uh, for anyone that's interested, we'll get that up there and get that updated. Yeah. Ah, sorry. I'm snake man. <laughs> <laughs> Problem with live filming. <laughs> it's live. <laughs> or it's undead. Yeah, or that's actually our October show. Yeah, we do our tour, like a live or undead tour. Oh, wow. Starts, uh, we started that last year. It's uh, actually our tour number two. We haven't announced any dates or anything that we've been mm -hmm. doing, but you can go to, like place to place. And we went to Evil Dead the Musical. We went to uh, Sci-Fi Horror Weekend. We uh, went to Scream Country. We went to Castle Muskogee. We went to wow. just these little haunts and attractions. And took cameras with us. It was like we're gonna kind of document. Uh, new interviewed a friend of mine who's an author who wrote that new book uh, on werewolves, uh, Evan Moon, and his name is like uh, Dennis McDonald. Uh, he's an old friend of mine, and he's on our show. He's one of our early writers and characters in the show. He he played Count Vino. If Vino gives you an indication of the character, he was a alcoholic vampire who drank the blood of alcoholics. He he was in denial of being an alcoholic because he's like, oh, I don't drink. It, 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 it's always the victims. I'm always feeding from it. Like they're always drunk. That's kind of our little joke of him. And then we have a, we have a werewolf on the show that's a friend of ours in a wheelchair, and he wanted to be on the show really bad. And so we thought, hmm, what? How can we put him on the show? We'll have him as the wheel wolf. <laughs> he's a werewolf in a wheelchair. It's perfect. And we dedicated an episode there to him. So we kind of go weird and inside out tweaky with ideas and play with them and have fun. Like our 100 show is coming up. My puppet's going to take a little bit into it and uh, who knows what's going to happen to me, Grimley and Trenton. It's going to be, which I didn't have the puppet here at the event. I was going to film a live walkthrough with him and have fun, but my puppet never made it. You can never trust puppets. It, it's it's contract. Yeah, they get, they get ahead of their own. And yeah. yeah, they're the ones pulling the strings. Exactly. But that's okay, because for Subicon, I'll make up for it. Thank you for everyone uh, joining us on this one. Uh, check out Dr. Fear's website. Check out fearcast.net. Look for updates uh, on us in general, because that's what we do. We like to make crazy things happen. But thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one. A fearful talk? Oh, can you give us a curse? Let's see. Uh, uh, just a cheesy lap one. Uh, Ipsium... Pipsium, any weenie, chili beanie. We'll find out who's the real meanie. <laughs> with fear squared, because it'll be fear squared. That's what we've been joking about. Might as well go with it. I mean, best idea is always. That's neat. Just put a fear with it too. Yeah. Which I forgot to say, we're also on Facebook and on MySpace. Yeah. 
and also on Twitter. Just type in Dr. Fear or maybe Count Gregor to find us to those names too. Okay. Thank you all. Have a good evening.